I found this in my pack the other day. Salt fish. Great for repairing hiking boots, and I think you might even be able to eat it. A, a bit of a shout out and a VR. I'd like to um, acknowledge three channels. There's Shalisa Schnell, who likes her bushcraft, but she's been going through a little bit of a, an intense time one way or another lately, so I just want to shout her out if you're not familiar with her channel. Go and check it out. Um, the next one is A Life of John. And we haven't heard a lot from Life of John lately, and there's a reason for that, I've recently become aware. But there's a new addition to the family. So, congratulations to you, John. And uh, if you're not familiar with that channel, then go and check him out. Now, the third channel is one that I've recently subscribed to. And he is called Florida Boy Survival. Um, interesting channel. Lots of stuff, a lot of uh, a lot of videos on GI equipment, canteen cup cooking. He's based there in the Florida swamp, has been since he was a boy. So he knows the area very well. Fire lighting, etc. Anyway, lots of interesting stuff. So if you're not familiar with him, go and check out Florida Boy Survival. Now, he started something about a week ago that he was going to call Canteen Cup Tuesdays. And it was where he was just going to cook something up every Tuesday in a canteen cup, and he threw it out. So this is kind of a video response to him. Um, last week he did Spam and Mac and Cheese in a canteen cup. And this Tuesday just gone, so yesterday, he did Spaghetti and Meat Sauce in a canteen cup. Now I did actually get um, a response together over the weekend, had a technological meltdown, um, lost everything, lost all the footage, so I had to reshoot it all again um, yesterday. So I was, I was too late just to get in for, for a Canteen Cup Tuesdays, but um, here it is. I'm going to do salt fish chowder with potato dumplings. Remain calm. There is bacon involved. Anyway, hope you check it out. Matt, I think it's a great idea. I think anybody can do it, as long as you've got something to cook in. Oh, the best way I can describe salt fish, if you're not familiar with it, it's, a, it's, a, it's fish jerky, but it's far more salt than jerky. It's, it's been salted to, to the point where, I mean, it, it will keep even in a tropical environment, it will keep for days, if not weeks. So obviously you have to get the salt out of it before you can eat it. But it's something a little bit different. Uh, just keep it interesting for you guys. So check it out. Enjoy the vid. Well, here it is. We've got an onion. Carrot. Usually I'd use one whole carrot. It, it will keep for three days in your pack. It goes a bit wibbly-wobbly, but uh, as long as you don't peel it, it's fine. Some garlic. A tablespoon of bacon, a tablespoon of flour, a tablespoon of powdered milk, that's for the roux. We've got our salted cod, salt fish there, just about two fingers worth I guess. We've got some fresh dill but the powdered stuff is just fine. We've got some fresh parsley but the, again the, you know, the dried stuff is fine. And this is the wild edible. This is the this is the Spanish thyme, and that's it. That's the main. That's the ingredients for the main dish, and then the dumpling mix. You can see here, yeah. we've got flour, plain flour, um, powdered mashed potato mix, and about half a teaspoon, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder, and that's in a Ziploc bag. And there's a reason for that which will become clear. Right, here's the salt fish. It's been washed off. Water on the go here in my Arctic canteen cup on my alcohol stove. 
uh, one ounce of fuel initially. That's just it. Now the trick is, I mean, ideally, you plan this ahead and maybe soak the salt fish overnight. But um, failing that, you can you can use it almost immediately by scalding it. So you'd wash off the excess salt, which I've done. And uh, now I'm just warming the water. They say that you shouldn't boil the water because it turns the whole thing rubbery. So it's just a, in order to get the salt out. Right, you can see that that's just coming up to the simmer now. So I know that it's hot. Take it out of there before it boils properly. And then ditch the water because it's too salt to use. Alright, so I've ditched the water. Now about a teaspoon of olive oil. And the tablespoon of bacon. Try it, they call it. The flour and milk. Kind of just to absorb some of the fat. And before it burns, add some water. Just about caught it until it started burning. So, alright, we'll make sure there's no lumps. And in goes the salt fish. Break it up. Salt card, carrots. Squash goes really well in this one. Parsley, dill, Spanish thyme. About halfway up, I guess. Because remember, it's got to simmer a little bit. I'm just running out of fuel now on my first ounce of alcohol. Okay, onions and garlic should have gone in a little bit earlier. I forgot about them, but they're going in right now. They don't escape. Okay, the stove's actually gone out now. That's that first ounce of fuel. So while that's count, uh, cooling down, I'm going to work on the dumplings. Here's that. Um, dumpling mix I showed you earlier, we can make sure it's all thoroughly mixed up. Mashed potato, flour, equal parts, about half a teaspoon of um, baking powder. And then straight into the Ziploc, add a little bit of water. And I made the mistake last time of adding too much too soon. What you're looking for is a thick peanut butter consistency. Right. Next ounce of fuel going in. I forgot the half a teaspoon of black pepper. It looks a little bit watery now, but that's all going to change. So you get it to that. Put the lid on. What's up? This is the potato dumpling mix, which is like a thick peanut butter. And this is the reason I did it in the, in the um, Ziploc bag. So I don't have to make washing up and I don't have to put my dirty bushcraft hands all in the dumplings. <coughs> So here's the trick to make the dumplings. You cut the corner off the Ziploc. So when it's, it's coming up to the simmer, you take your Ziploc bag and start to make some dumplings. Like little, little, oh no, I missed. Like little gnocchi.
piece of cake. All sounds very posh, but in actual fact it's simple, made of simple stuff and it's absolutely delish. A little bit much actually, that, that mixture. I reckon you could get enough for two. Not too greedy people in one Arctic canteen cup. And there, make the last one a bit bigger. And there it is. And then you cover it and forget about it. Do not lift the lid. Let the alcohol, you know, the fuel burn out. Hopefully we'll get about five minutes out of it. Four or five minutes. And then you let it stand for about ten. And it should be ready. We'll be back. Alright, so it's had another five minutes. And stood for a further ten minutes. Yeah, in there. Look. So there it is. You can see all the little dumplings in there. They're just gems. Oh. And I'll put it out on the plate because it's you can't see what's going on really. <coughs> and there's the saltfish chowder in there. You can see it's it's thickened up. And there it is. Saltfish chowder and potato dumplings in a canteen cup. Just to prove that the dumplings are not like bullets. Mm. 